Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today we're going to be processing this image of the uh, Flaming Star Nebula. And then over on the left hand side we have the tadpoles. And we're going to be processing a little differently today. Uh, we're going to be using the PyMagic Studio uh, suite of applications. So it's a, an application for automating the workflow through PixInsight and a second one to automate getting started in Photoshop. Uh, that product is online now. You can find it in the shop at uh, PyMagicStudio.com and it's available now at an introductory price of $89. So let's jump into PixInsight and Photoshop using PyMagic Studio. So we're going to start in PixInsight uh, like we always do, and I'm going to go to script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing, and this is basically the same process we've used over and over for years. Um, if we look at the setup, this is a one-shot color camera. So if I look at the lights, you can see I've loaded, and you can load these with the plus lights or you can load a directory. We have the uh, flaming star captured with both a dual narrowband L enhance filter and also a luminosity. And then we have the uh, master flats, dark, and bias frames loaded. Uh, the one thing that is important when you're using PyMagic Studio is be sure to check the auto crop setting so that uh, WBPP will automatically crop so that there's no artifacts around the edges that could interfere with the uh, gradient correction later. On the calibration tab, we want to select the flats and be sure we check CFA images since these are color filter array and apply to all flat frames which means it's going to apply to both the L enhance and the plane luminosity and then likewise on the RGB we'll check CFA and specify that these are RGB images RGGB and again apply to all light frames I've selected an output folder and with that I'm just ready to click run it will do a quick check, tell me everything's ready to go, and all I have to do then is press continue. Now, I've already run this, so let's jump ahead and look at the output. Normally, we would open these and start processing, processing them through all of the individual steps of uh, gradient correction, blur exterminator, star exterminator, SPCC, and so forth. With the new utility script, PyMagic, uh, PyMagic does all of that repetitive work for us, so we don't have to go through all those individual steps. We just fill out a form, so this is going to be the flaming star. And I'm going to select the folders that were the files that we want to process. So in this case, it's the flaming star. Here is my master. And you'll notice that it created both the non-autocrop and the autocrop versions. And I want to select the two autocrop versions. And I'll just do a quick filter check to confirm that it recognized the uh, it recognized the luminosity. Now the RGB, the L enhance, it did not recognize that immediately as a dual narrowband. So I'll just open this drop down. Specify this is a dual narrowband, uh, HA plus O3, as opposed to a sulfur oxygen. And then click Apply and Close. And now PyMagic will remember that setting from now on. I can auto-detect settings. And PyMagic will select what it thinks are the appropriate settings. So for instance, on the RGB tab, we have gradient correction. It's going to run spectrophotometric color calibration. It's going to do a deblur for the stars first, and then a second deblur uh, for the nebula. Uh, it's by default. It's using the Verilux stretch. If I preferred, I could use the just the standard string, screen transfer nuclear stretch. It'll apply denoise through the Russell Crowman uh, noise exterminator, and then it's going to create a starless and a rich color stars image, and it'll do that for both of the RGB images. 
There are no mono files, so there's no reason to process mono. So at this point, I'm ready to run. I just click start. Oh, need to specify the output directory here. So this is going to be, I think I'll just put it in this output files. And now we're running. And this will take a couple minutes to run and we'll check back when it's done. Okay, so PyMagic is finished, and if we look at the process console, we can see that the uh, act process is done, uh, and it gives us a little bit of a summary of what it did, if you care about that. But the most important thing is it created the files for us. So it doesn't do anything you can't do, uh, and I'm sure some people will point that out, that, well, you know, it doesn't do anything I can't do. Uh, what it does is basically it follows the same process rules that I follow when I'm processing my images. That I do the same things, I follow the same rules over and over. And that's what PyMagic does in uh, PixInsight. And now we can go to Photoshop and we'll open up the uh, AstroMagic tool and we'll import the images that were just created for us. So I'll go to my swap files put files and here's the flaming star that was just created there's the pi magic folder and I'll just select all the files click open and again uh, there's no secret sauce it's not doing anything that I wouldn't do uh, if I was sitting at your computer and setting up Photoshop for you to process an image that you just captured this is the way I would have you set up the files in Photoshop so that they're ready for you to start working on and improving the challenge now is not, you know, what are all of the, the fine points of the steps that you have to go through to get ready. You're ready. Now we're ready to start processing. So you can see that uh, we've got pretty decent looking images to start with. Uh, and in the layers palette, we can see we've got the dual narrow band as the bottom layer. And then we've got the RGB on top of that and then a global adjustment layers for just overall adjustments, stars, and annotations. And of course we can turn any one of these off. So if we turn off the annotations, there's the image by itself. And you can begin to see right away, I have a fairly inexpensive Optolong L Enhance filter. And one of its downsides is it creates a lot of uh, glare around bright stars. So we'll need to fix that. Uh, yes, I will point out in the stars folder, it's using both the dual narrowband stars and the RGB stars. Uh, the RGB stars by themselves are somewhat larger, so using the dual narrowband stars gets us a little bit uh, smaller, finer stars. Uh, let's see, this is the dual narrowband stars by themselves. And for now, we'll just turn the stars off altogether. And now you can really see the, you know, the artifacts that we've got from the L Enhance. And notice also this star, uh, because the reflection and the glare was so bright, uh, Star Exterminator didn't remove that star from the dual narrow band. So I'm pretty sure if I turn off the RGB layer, we still see this star. So this star is going to be missing from the uh, dual narrowband stars because it's in the still in the nebula layer, and that's not something that uh, AstroMagic or PyMagic does do or doesn't do. That's just the nature of the data and the way Star Exterminator works. So if you had done the process manually, it would look exactly the same. So. We do want to be sure that we recover this star, uh, and it's particularly bright star, uh, when we finish the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to my dual narrow band data, and I want to focus on removing these reflections. And I'm going to do that non-destructively by turning off all of the layers above the one layer that has the image on it. And I'm going to add a blank layer and I'm going to go to my Remove tool, and I've got Sample All Layers selected. So it's going to sample all layers. That's why I have to turn off all the other layers. But it's going to put the corrections just on this blank layer. 
So I'll just go around. I have not clicked the option to remove after each stroke. So it will let me go around and just click on each place where I have an artifact that I need to remove. And you can see there are quite a few here. Uh, most of them, the Star Exterminator did a very good job of removing the star, but it did leave the artifact, which is, I, I guess, what it should do. Uh, that looks a little bit of one here. I think I'm going to leave that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that out. Um, and might be one here. So now that I've gone around and selected the places where I see those uh, reflection artifacts, I'll just click the check mark. And now Photoshop will go through and calculate what it thinks should be there, kind of connecting the dots up from around the spot that we removed. And it's done a pretty good job, but by having it on a separate layer now, I can turn that off and on. So if I decide that I didn't want to remove something or it made a mistake, uh, I haven't changed this original layer. So I can now turn everything else back on. And this is what the L Enhance data looks like by itself. If I turn on the RGB, now the RGB data is in screen blending mode. And we might even boost the brightness of that a little bit. Uh, the videos on the uh, PyMagic website uh, talk about the structure of these groups, but the endpoints layer adjustment just kind of establishes a black point. Uh, it does not establish a white point because there's too much risk of blowing out highlights, but I will come to the plane levels adjustment and increase the brightness of the whites a little bit, and then I may also increase the midpoint. Now the beauty of doing it in Photoshop like this is I immediately see how this RGB layer is going to interact with the L Enhance or the dual narrowband layer underneath it. So I immediately see the result. I don't have to guess how bright should I make this so that it looks correct 10 steps later when I put it all together. And that's really the beauty of non-destructive editing in Photoshop. So I don't know that I have any global adjustments that I feel like I need to make. If I do, I could come into the global adjustments. Uh, I might brighten the highlights a little bit. But I feel like it's this one looks pretty good just out of the gate. I just need to make sure the dark areas don't get too dark and lose detail. And now let's look at the stars. And remember the star down here, that uh, this is the one that really got lost. And it looks like we're still picking up some of that reflection. And that may be on the stars layer itself. So let's see what happens if I turn off the dual narrow band. Yeah, actually the reflections from the dual narrow band are creating, continuing to create problems even on the star layer. There's some of that reflection got into the star layer. So two ways I can approach that. One is I can just ignore and just leave the dual narrow band stars turned off. So we're just using the RGB stars and that's perfectly fine. If you still want to use the combination, if you like the way the dual narrowband stars look overall, but you don't like the effect they're having on bright stars, we can use a mask to selectively hide these dual narrowband stars from this layer. And so I'll just grab my brush tool, tap X to make black my foreground, tap the zero key to get to 100% opacity and I might make the brush just a little bit smaller. Now when I paint with black on this mask, it's going to hide this dual narrow band star layer, and so you'll only see the RGB stars. And since it's at 100% opacity, uh, just one or two clicks. And so now we can go around to any place where we think we had problems with that and hide that reflection artifact, the bright star here, we want to make sure. So that gives us 
the kind of the best of both worlds. If we still want to adjust the stars further, we can use the levels adjustment layer and quickly adjust the overall brightness of the stars. And I might want to turn the annotations back on. And that's essentially a finished image. Uh, at this point, I would probably save this as a uh, .psb, which is Photoshop's large document format. If I want to save this as a JPEG that I can save online, and actually looking at it, I think I'm going to come back to my global adjustments and boost the color saturation a little bit, give it a little bit more drama. Uh, I might want to crop this a little bit, and I might want to, uh, I guess mostly I want to crop it a little. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the crop tool, and it's important that you don't delete cropped pixels. And I'll just adjust this crop angle and choose that as my image. Apply that. And you can see in the preview now how much I'm cropping it. So at this point, I can go to File, Export As. And this will give me the option to export this as a JPEG. And I can specify a size, and I typically use 2040 pixels wide. And it'll automatically adjust the height. It'll convert to sRGB and embed the color profile. And then when I click Export, I can just give this a uh, name. And that has saved that now as a JPEG ready to, to share. I haven't actually changed the size of this image, and of course you'll notice all of the layers are still here. If I want to clean this up a little, I might go back to Astro Magic, go to Tools, and Close Groups. And now I can save this as a master file. And I would typically save this in my photos 2025. I'll have to add a 2026. And I'll save this as a large document format. And that's it. Uh, if I decide to come back tomorrow and work on this image some more, all of the layers, all the adjustments, everything I did in Photoshop will still be intact and non-destructive, and I could continue working with it tomorrow. So, hope you found this useful and informative. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks. Uh -huh.